If you follow at all Catholic news in North America, you would have heard by now about the National Eucharistic Revival being sponsored by the U.S. Catholic bishops. This weekend on the Solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ, or Corpus Christi, is when this revival is being launched in order to renew the church by enkindling a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. The reason for this Eucharistic revival is because the world is hurting and turning away from God. As I mentioned last year in a series of homilies, the Pew Research Center released the findings of a study that found just 31% of U.S. Catholics they surveyed believe that the bread and wine used in the Eucharist through a process called transubstantiation become the body and blood of Jesus, a fundamental teaching central to the Catholic faith known as the real presence. If the Trinity is the source and crown of Christian doctrine and belief, and all things flow from there, Eucharistic living and belief in that is the source and summit of our faith, the way we live our lives. There seems to be a disconnect. So this timely initiative of a Eucharistic revival is aimed at restoring faith in Jesus Christ, truly Lord, really present in the Eucharist, healing division, and ultimately uniting us once again around the source and summit of our faith, the Holy Eucharist. This initiative is to last three years so that people can be inspired, educated, and unified. For me, inspiration comes from the various Eucharistic miracles in which the Lord intervenes to help foster true faith. First, it shows that lack of faith in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist is not unique to our generation. We're not special here. Each generation has to reaffirm this beautiful teaching and live it from the heart. One such miracle is when a priest was making a pilgrimage from Germany to Rome. Along the way, he stopped in Bolsena, Italy, to celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass. In response to his doubt, when the priest recited the words of consecration over the bread, blood started seeping from the consecrated host, onto the altar and corporal, the sacred linens at Holy Mass. The priest reported this miraculous event to Pope Urban IV, who was staying in Orvieto. Like any miracle, it was investigated with the tools that they would have at, had at that time, and believing the miracle to be true, brought the host and bloodstained cloth to Orvieto and was placed in the cathedral where they remain today, and many people make a pilgrimage to Orvieto, to that cathedral, for that very purpose. One of the many Eucharistic miracles that we have. You might be more familiar with the one from Lanciano, Italy. One more uh, recent in Poland in 1996. And even one in Argentina, just more recently. Many, many miracles certainly help to foster true faith. And we hope that there will be many in these next few years during this Eucharistic revival, and yes, they should inspire us. But we know that the church does not base her teachings on miracles. Rather, those miracles, those signs of our time, are an invitation to learn and be more educated about the Eucharist, with the goal being a true encounter with the risen Lord really present there. One place that we can start is where most Eucharistic miracles happen. Really, the most beautiful and most awesome miracle happens at Holy Mass, where ordinary bread and wine are transubstantiated into the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. What happens at every Mass is the sacrifice of Calgary being perpetuated. This means that we are not crucifying Jesus over and over again, as some Protestants claim, but that Jesus' sacrifice is represented, made present again each time we celebrate the Eucharist. With that veil removed, we are being taken back all the way into that past. And that Eucharistic sacrifice brings us back to Calvary. 
and makes present the fruit of that sacrifice to every generation. That is the grace we've been preaching about, that which elevates us, our natural capacity, to love and serve one another and God. This grace also leads us on in our Christian journey here on earth towards the future when Christ will come again. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. That mystery of faith should actually reflect how we live our life, how we live this sacrifice, how we move ourselves from this altar to the world. How? The love of God is being poured into our hearts as we receive Jesus in Holy Communion, food for the journey. When we receive the Eucharist, we are receiving the very body and blood of Jesus into our souls. We are be uni being united with the Lord, the creator and king of the universe. And as St. Paul teaches the Corinthians, if we are being united with Christ in such an intimate way, the bonds of unity of the church as the mystical body of Christ is being reinforced and strengthened. We are being drawn up into the very life of Christ. He's the, he's the head, we the body. We are being brought together, unified, being made a communion of believers. Being inspired, being educated, being unified leads us to hear the invitation from Jesus to be an instrument of healing, renewing, and unifying the church and the world. Missionaries of the Eucharist to bring his love and his presence to others. The gospel of today begins with the whole notion of Jesus healing people, then leading to the miracle of the lo five loaves and two fishes being multiplied. We don't have much to offer. Abraham gives one-tenth of everything for his victory over the pagans. The apostles give the five loaves and two fish. This littleness, this pittance of an offering, when offered to Christ, then it will be blessed, broken, and multiplied for the world. That offertory procession, that time of offertory, that's the moment where we bring our heart, we bring what we have to the Lord, and that he blesses it, he breaks it, he multiplies it for the world. Today on the Feast of Corpus Christi, we remember God's loving gift to us in the Eucharist. This remembrance should lead us to loving thanksgiving to God for allowing us to participate in the Holy Mass, and to receive Holy Communion, nourishing and strengthening our life in Him. With that unity of life, that unity of faith, we can give thanks to God for always being present to us, abiding with us in the tabernacles around the world, being our food for the journey here on earth, he alone is our life and the life of the world. Amen.